Good evening and welcome. This is Mike Harris on RentsRadio.com, and today is Friday, March 14th, 2014. And this evening, I'm, I'm very pleased to have a special guest tonight. Uh, some of you, I'm sure, of our listeners have heard of him, uh, but this is the first time having him on my show, so I'm delighted to welcome uh, Kesh. Kesh, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Good morning or good afternoon to you or good evening to you, wherever you are. It, it, it's good evening uh uh, it's been, uh, on the West Coast, but it's uh, it's night over on the East Coast. And, but we go globally around the, the planet on this uh, on this broadcast. But anyway, uh, Cash, for those of you who know, you know that uh, you've got the Cash Foundation and that you've been doing um, work in what I will call the new physics. Um, and why don't you tell us a little bit about what this is and how did you get here? Where, where, you know, what, what led you down this path? Uh, first of all, good morning. Uh, my name, as most of your listeners know, is Mehran Tarakali Kesh. I'm Iranian uh, by birth. I'm still Iranian national. I've lived in Europe for over 40 years now. And um, I, have, I was born in a family where my father was part of the X-ray and Philips to do with medical systems. So um, radiation and these kind of things in part of my... But, but, bread and butter from birth, and uh, I graduated from Queen Mary College as a nuclear engineer specialized in uh, reactor system control, and um, from the beginning I didn't agree with my peers regarding the way the physics is written, it did not make sense, and at the same time, very much the first time as a child, I watched the uh, Apollo landing. I knew there is something wrong the way we have done it. So I set out to understand how we can go, uh, every one of us, to anywhere we like in this universe without a fuel. So it became an ambition from young age to find a way um, that uh, uh, we can move we can do whatever we like, but we don't need to go through this cumbersome methods of rocket propulsion and being an astronaut and be a privilege to a few. So over the years, even during my university time and after my university time, I stopped with working within the environment of physics because I wanted to be independently dictating my own way of working. The main question for me was, how come so many planets and stars move around and they rotate for millions of years without any wings and without any rocket propulsion? Um, we were aware of uh, magnetic, but the biggest mystery has been what is the gravity. And I set out to discover how gravity is created. It took me some 30 years. Um, I graduated in 1981 from university. By 1985, I have a letter, even with NASA, dated 14th of June, 1985. I proposed new systems to NASA at that time, but um, as a thought which was so radical, it was not acceptable. So I set out to prove the technology myself, but it took me nearly, nearly up to 2000, in, in early 2000, when I knew I have uh, understood the concept of gravity. And um, uh, in that 20 years, I ran a business internationally around the world. So I financed most of the research during that time myself. And um, so in early 2000, I set out, I knew I found out what has been the holy grail of physics, which is gravity, how it's been done, how. Now it was a matter of building a system to prove my theory about creation of gravity was correct. And the principle comes that if you look at any entity in the universe, being a plasma of an atom, uh, a plasma of the Earth, a plasma of a solar system, or galaxies, they all possess gravity and magnetic field, what we call non-magnetical, gravitational and magnetical. Magnetical will be the repulsion, gravity being the attraction. So we see they possess the two together at the same time, 
We had a very good system, what we call the Earth. We looked at the structure of the full inner structure of the Earth, and it showed that the Earth had two plasmatic or two magnetic fields separated to somewhere that was creating the repulsion, what we call the magnetic field, and attraction to gravity, like two similar and dissimilar poles of the magnet. So, um, I announced early in 2000 that uh, the Earth, the inner core, what we call that solid core, has got to have another core, we, I call it the Caroline core, and the magnetic field between this core and what we call the outer core, which is a liquid magnet or magma, creates the magnetic field of the Earth, which was at that time radical, and, and I set out to build such a system to show my theory was correct. So, in that process, now we have built a number of reactors confirming the theory, and um, different institutes have uh, evaluated the technology in different ways. We published uh, papers from different companies who assess the technology, the professors who studied the technology. And now, now that we have understood the concept of the gravitational magnetic field in one system, um, we set out the Cash Foundation early 2005-2006 to produce or to set up a company or organization to develop a new space technology, what we call now Spaceship Institute, where we have entered the world of space technology. I have financed everything for past decade, and now in past mm, more or less three months, we start accepting students to teach, and now we have received the first eight scientists from around the world, which have been teaching in the past uh, month or so. This is in our fourth week, how the systems like this work. And um, most of the space institutes around the world know our work. They are very familiar. I have written three books about the basic theory of physics, how it is and um, how movement is made in the universe, and how the universe structure is. All this um, theory about the up down quarks and all this is nonsense. And I published my first paper, I actually I sent my first paper to be published in 2004, the day I received my paper from the uh, publishing company, or what we call the peer review journal, it's called the Royal Astronomic Society that my paper will be put in the library, I will not be published because of his presentation. On the same day, the what I call the criminal, Mr. Stephen Hawking, on the same day announced that after 30 years, he has changed his mind after reading my paper to for peer review. And um, I objected to it, to the Institute, why, how come they, this is a crooked job peer review, and I decided I'll never submit any papers to be peer-reviewed. I write my books and my papers, and I'll leave it to hand of the people who read it to, to peer-reviewed according to their okay, interest. Let, let, me, let me back up for a second here, because let me understand correctly. Now, I, I heard what you just said, and it seems like you have a, uh, uh, you've done a feasibility study, and you, you, you've gotten past that. You, you've proven that uh, your model works. And uh, you, I have to ask, what is the next step? How, where, where do you go from here? Um, as part of the space program, we now become a space program, very much like, let's say, NASA or other space agencies, with the difference that the reactors we build does not need fueling. It works a copy of the planet or a star. It creates its own gravitational magnetic field. And if you have two magnets, especially two spherical magnets, if you put them in the right way, uh, you find that they duck themselves and they keep a distance from each other. If you put two similar pole of magnets, they distance themselves. And if you put two dissimilar, they attract themselves. As we create um, both gravitational and magnetic field in our reactor, our reactor, like Earth, creates its own gravitational magnetic field, and in interaction with the Earth or any position gravitational magnetic field, it dictates its distance from that object. 
So now we can get attracted to the gravitational magnetic field of the moon or repelled by it. We don't burn fuel anymore. Our reactors are about 15, 20 centimeter in diameter. We have shown lift. We have shown reduction in uh, uh, weight. We have um, shown how power can be produced. Our power generator now has gone to, as a gift to Italian nation, the Italian manufacturer for producing the power generators. And as a space institute now, like any other space institute, we are responsible for all needs of the man in the universe through the new understanding of physics. So we have developed different systems for production of material in the space, for production of food, for looking after the health, for energy, and any other aspects of our need in the space through the new understanding. And so we have put these in practice. We run the trials for health application in space for years. We have found a solution to a disease like ILS, which we have put a video on the internet by the person who is the volunteer. We have produced nanomaterials who they say cost a lot of money out of Coca-Cola bottle, which we shown the material in a live video. Uh, the production of this material through the system has been confirmed in 2006 by most leading institute in the world, which we could not show because of intimidation and harassment and the threat we received from this institute. And now, about three, four, two months ago, we put a video out how to make this material freely out of with a Coca-Cola bottle. And we have submitted it to the Japanese government for Fukushima because it can absorb a lot of radiation from the ground at literally zero cost. And um, one of our institute knowledge seekers is from Japan. And she has been invited by the authorities in Japan by two different groups, which they've been provided for the radioactive materials by the government for our materials to be flown in before end of this month and be tested in Japan directly in Fukushima. So we have entered the mainstream of the science directly through the simple application of what we can show. Um, we have produced a system where the CO2 can be made into a solid matter. You can have it in liquid or gel or a powder form. This has been confirmed scientifically by Raman spectroscopy and infrared spectroscopy by universities in Europe, which we have published a paper in one of our books. So um, you can use what you absorb as a CO2 liquid from the air uh, into the radioactive material and absorbs this, what we call a gans or nanomaterial of a gas, can absorb all the radiations and becomes like a gel, like uh, when you put some, what we call lemon in a yogurt, you get a um, gel type thing and the water becomes totally pure and all the radioactive becomes like sediment to the bottom of the tank. So most of the situation in Fukushima can be resolved immediately and the Japanese government, TEPCO, knows about it, so the material is getting sent to TEPCO for immediate application. And um, one of the biggest things which you found with this um, new technology, now you understand we have control over gravity and magnetic field in a very simple way. We have found a fourth state of matter. Up to now, the matter was liquid, gas, and solid. If you increase temperature or pressure, you went from one state to another. With the new knowledge, we have control over gravity, magnetic field of elements. What this means, it means we can make the gases into solid by just changing or reducing gases, magnetic gravitational field, or increasing it. And when you change the gravitational magnetic field of the gases through a simple process, which will release the video of it next, hopefully, Thursday. You can convert gases at room temperature and pressure to a solid, what we call GANS. Well, that, 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 that's been the holy grail of physics for a long time, is to take yeah. uh, light, lightweight gases, hydrogen, helium, etc., and be able to convert them into a metallicized form. Uh, that, that's really, well, that, 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 that is really an impressive uh, accomplishment, uh, truly. 
Yeah, but the thing is now when we make these uh, things, they behave like superconductors. When you convert gases into solid state, they become superconductors. It's been um, evaluated by universities. We put the graphs and the data in our book and the paper we published. And um, what has happened, uh, we've been told, a very simple explanation of it is, we've been told that um, gases cannot be in solid state at room temperature and pressure, as a solid condition. But I always say in my talks, if you consider your own um, uh, life, which is made, your physicality is made of amino acids, which is a hydrogen, nitrogen, carbon, and oxygen, these are mainly gases, how come they become your own solid? If you flash, if you pinch yourself or hold your fingers and squeeze, um, let's say, your other hand or your cheek, you're squeezing four gases. How come you deny your own existence? So now we understand how gases convert to solid and we can do it. So this has opened a new frontier in space, which means for a space, we don't need to carry any food with us. We can create gravitational magnetic field of oxygen and hydrogen and the rest and produce amino acid anywhere in a space through a simple conversion, which we're showing this one. We have shown it before, but we show the process of manufacture the next weekend or next Thursday workshop of the Cash Foundation. And so um, through the same process in a space, we don't need the uh, materials to carry anymore because we understand gravitational magnetic field of, let's say, copper. We create the plasma of the copper within the environment. We absorb from magnetic field of the universe, and we convert it into matter. So all you need to have is the design of what you want to make, and very much like a three-dimensional printer, you, you produce the material you need as a spare part or new material you need, you think you need in the space for a new project. The space technology has changed, and this is one of the biggest objections to our technology by governments and individuals, because they would like to keep the status quo, because they make money out of it. As I say to them, you will make more money out of new technology that could, you could ever dream. But this money-making is limited to the boundary of this planet. In a space, we cannot give anyone in a space in the universal community greenback or what you call dollars. Dollar has no value out of the boundary of this, this planet. It uh, doesn't matter how much gold you have in your reserve, beyond the boundary of this planet has no value. And secondly, we have learned how to produce gold out of the environment of even, let's say, mercury. We taught this to our knowledge seekers this week. And it has been done about six years ago in Tehran because I was invited by the Iranian government in 2008, and I developed a spaceship technology for Iran. It's a well-known documented um, in the press. Um, even though I lived outside Iran for over 40 years, but still the Iranian national, I never changed my passport. But I stay loyal to my nation. At the same time, I stay loyal to humanity. I, all my patents have been been opened freely, given a gift to humanity. So nobody can patent this new technology, but they can use it to serve each other. And about two years ago, we organized a um, peace conference by the world ambassadors in our center in Belgium. In our two peace conferences, a number of ambassadors, world ambassadors attended, and a number of nations have asked for what we produce as a USB keys with all the patents hidden and the public patents and the design of the reactors, the blueprint of the reactors, we gave it as a gift to the governments of the world who wanted it or uh, they attended our meeting. Uh, and in the American president, um, um, on the day of the election, requested for the USB key, which we gave it to, to the American nation. And uh, so now, one of the nations, which is Taiwan, who, which received the key, USB key, which was for the government, has given these um, hidden patents and everything else to their national scientists to develop the technology. So now it's gone from government in the hand of scientists and the public. And we have asked from the scientists of the Taiwan who received it 
to release the full USB stick, uh, all the patterns which has been gifted to humanity by me um, in public, which we expect to be done within the next few days. I have a couple couple questions for you here. One of the problems you're encountering here with um, the resistance to change, let's just call it the inertia, uh, because there is this legacy of technology out there, the old technology. And you know what? I, I hear our break coming up, uh, in, uh, our music coming up in the background. So I'll save this question to the other side of the break. So folks, stick with us. Uh, we'll be back uh, right after the short break. More with uh, physicist Cash. So stick with us. Be right back. This is Mike Harris on RentsRadio.com. Today is Friday, March fourteenth, two thousand fourteen. My guest this evening is uh, Cash. Cash, welcome back. And, and before the break, we were talking a little bit about uh, this legacy technology that's out there, the, the technology that's gotten us this far. And one of the, one of the issues you're fighting is really a, uh, um, an accounting issue because it's, uh, you know, these companies or these countries sometimes will invest you know, tens of billions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars in uh, technology projects. And uh, they want to recover their investment, and, and it's hard for them. And you come along with this, this magnificent but, but highly dis- disruptive technology that, that very quickly makes their investment worthless overnight. And uh, this, this just makes accountants crazy. Uh, this is what we were told. The world of finance cannot stand another, um, uh, what's called a banking shock. But in fact, the banking shock has already arrived. As I always say, they left me too long to write too many books, too many papers, too many patterns, and give too many lectures around the world and talk to too many scientists. So there is no alternative but to accept the new technology. Um, a lot of companies are aware of it. Um, even back to NASA in 2006-7, NASA, even NASA invited us last year, two years ago, to go to give a lecture to show to their scientists they say, what are we going to do with 7,000 scientists in Proportion Lab? Because Proportion is more or less dead, it's finished, it's buried. So how many redundancies can you pay or the scientists have to adapt? The same thing is with electronics. Now we can make superconductors which you couldn't even dream about because nanomaterial in a gas state are the most superconductive materials we ever known. So uh, somebody has to write off the losses because now... If you don't do it, we have shown it how it's done in the kitchen. You can do it in a garage. So the big corporations, if they don't um, link to it very quickly, they're going to be left behind. Uh, We are in a state of what was a dream, making computers from working through by thinking, very much like the brain of the man. Now we have the material and we're actually testing in our reactors. Uh, our reactors, now we have the capability to make a magnet for any material in the world you need. Gold, we can make a magnet for it. Diamond, we can make it for a cost of zero. So somebody has to write off or merge the old and the new temporarily for, for a bit till the new is completely covered. And uh, now we have announced this year we start building the first what we call the spacecraft or what we now has become known in past few weeks as no house boat. We are building the first spaceship in Italy. We have started a procedure where we can carry up to 500 people simultaneously to any spot in at the moment, so let's say to the moon or to Mars, it's starting by the end of this year. This is not ambitious because these systems create their own gravitational magnetic field, so you fly exactly like a jetliner. You don't go to school to learn how to get into a giant liner. You buy a ticket, you go to the airport, and you fly. There they create a gravity magnetic by pressure to keep out 1G. This system's not 1G. Let me ask you the next question. Okay, so you can do interplanet... You you feel that interplanetary travel is uh, pretty much fiat accompli. You can get that done now. Yes, we... It's been our our space technology as by the European government. Well, my, my, my next question then is... How far off is interstellar travel? We have to decide. We have to understand the crossing of the boundaries of the plasma of this planet, uh, this uh, solar system. We need still a lot to learn uh, how to cross. But uh, more or less, before end of this decade, the space is is open to us um, uh, already. Some people might think this is a dream. (laughs) 
but the magnetic gravitational system, what we call Magrav system, has been developed by the Iranian. American drone was captured uh, in 2011. Oh, I remember that very, very distinctly. Yeah, that's that's the, that's the way this technology was um, was used. The the only thing is one of the biggest breakthrough with this technology is that now you fly. We got an aircraft which is missing at the moment somewhere in over Asia. If if Boeing can give us a sample piece of this aircraft when it was manufactured, and we can analyze it. And we can produce within next, if we don't find this craft, uh, we can produce the gravitational magnetic of the metal or part of the metal used in this aircraft. We can build a system which can attract our system or the craft to the system. So it's very easy to produce it. It's not very hard. Our reactors are the size of a football. You can control its gravity magnetic field to the extent you like. Now we fly without assurance, without no insurance, even with our aircrafts. A single bird can bring the, the craft down. With a new system, you copy off the earth, you have an atmosphere around you, dynamic, which protects you. It's the first time ever we have flight with protection. So, um, and it's been the Chinese, the technology has been proven to be correct and it's been applied by government. And one of the reasons we see resistance to our development by nations like America, Canada, and EU, which are trying to make a kangaroo court to put me to, what do you call it, discredit my foundation and put me in prison, is because up to now the technology, every time we submitted patent for European patent, they had it in their club. Now we have given it to the world, and now the other governments and the rest of the world has opening and opening the patent, they see a threat to their superiority. This is the threat to us by governments. If we were a nonsense and no effects technology, they would have never made these efforts. Canadian government would not capture me, arrest me, and imprison me in the airport for 11 days in 2010 and threaten to kill me. You don't threaten and imprison a scientist in the airport for 11 days and make a kangaroo court. So they know the technologies and they, they stole all the technology out of my, my suitcases, which I was carrying to Mexico to solve the problem with the Mexican government. No, like, like I said, this is a what I would call a disruptive te technology. They call it the most disruptive technology ever known to man. This is how yeah, it's been called. And, 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 they're, and they're scared to death because they like sitting on top of the heap and they don't want anybody else to be able to challenge their position. That's the problem. Uh, very much so. You're very correct. Very well, nice. well, let me let me go ahead and ask another question for you then, because you've mentioned about you have knowledge seekers. If any of the listeners out there wanted to become a knowledge seeker, and wanted to come to work with you, wanted to come and learn, how do they do this? Who do you select? What's your process? Um, the process now goes in the panel of the knowledge seekers. They decide who they want because now they know what technology is involved in. You mm -hmm. send mm -hmm. your CV to the Spaceship Institute at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. It's called Spaceship Institute at gmail.com. Um, why we use the Gmail? Because they hacked our Cash Foundation website of uh, what do you call it, the server of the GoDaddy, downloading all our emails. So we've gone through Gmail. We have, um, you can, we're looking for anyone, anyone, scientists, anybody who understands, who can help us with development, programming, design. You send your CV, and to be a knowledge seeker is for two years. The fee is at 20,000 euro per annum. You work and live more or less day and night with, uh, with the institute. You, within the first week of being in the institute, you'll be taught um, initially by me and now by knowledge seekers. And then you have to teach. Okay, well, we have another break, and we'll be right back after the short break. More with nuclear engineer Cash. Stick with us. Come back. This is Mike Harris on RinseRadio.com, and this evening is uh, my, my guest is uh, nuclear engineer Cash uh, from the Cash Foundation. We're discussing the advances in what I will call the new physics. And, you know, Cash, another thing I want to talk about is you funded this out of your own pocket for most of the, the existence of the Cash Foundation. Uh, 
my listeners are are very dedicated and they're they're very much knowledge seekers in many different ways. But now, now people get a pen and pencil out because I want you to write this down. How can they help support your efforts financially? And you know, is there do you have a website? Is there a donate yes. button? Where do they go to if they wanted to give you five or ten bucks or five thousand or ten thousand? You know, how, how can they support you? The foundation is called Cash Foundation. It's spelled K E for Edward. S for sugar, H for Henry, E for Edward, foundation.org. Uh, you go to Cash Foundation to a donation button, and you can pay directly to the bank. At this moment, um, the details I can put at the bottom of the screen for you uh, that you can see and you can post it. Um, the bank is in Holland. The, the cost of the making the first spaceship at the moment has been set about 50 to 55 million euros. And um, it needs a world collaboration to do it. You can donate or it can sponsor scientists to be in the institute. We have m most of our um, scientists here sponsored by individuals, by companies to be here now, the eight knowledge seekers. And in May, we're accepting 24 more. And in September, we are planning to accept 250 more. The nationality, color, and race is totally we are blind to. Uh, we all work the same way. And you can donate it and support us scientifically or financially through the Cash Foundation website. If they bring our website down, you can go. We have different teaching groups and YouTubes around the world and in different languages. Um, you can still get a link to the Cash Foundation bank account in Holland, which is called Stichting, which means foundation. Stichting the Cash Foundation in AB AMRO Bank in Netherlands. You can pick up the, um, the account number, the big number, uh, and you can even apply to be the first passenger in this group of 500 people, which we are planning to, to what do you call it, take into space in the first flight. So you can do, do both. Uh, we are not selling tickets because we try to do it and the government tried to stop us. So now you can volunteer or donate your knowledge or financially to us to build the first opportunity for humanity to go to space, not nationalities. And um, we are looking for, and we already have a company who is going to work with us to build the first uh, steps. We have the reactors, and from next week, our reactors will be broadcast live through the testing failure, success, breaking up systems, more or less. You can monitor around the world 24 hours a day. This is the plan we are setting up in, with the knowledge seekers. So we need a huge amount of donation to break through because the way we done with Fukushima, now we are doing with the CO2, the way we have solved the problem with cancer, with chemotherapy, the way we have solved the ILS, all financially, privately done out of our own pocket and sale of the books. My books can be bought on my website. And um, now it's been translated to a number of languages around the world by different Cash Foundation members. It's just been translated into Chinese to be published in May in China and is used by professors for teaching in space technology, as we had one of them in our lectures yesterday in the universities in China. So it's not something a fairy tale is accepted technology and is getting taught in universities by professors who understand the new understanding of physics. So let me, let me ask you another yes, question. Yes. We've got uh, about five minutes left. And so you know, I want to give you a chance to have me not ask you questions, but to have you communicate your message directly as to, to, the, to the listeners out there. So what is it that you want the listeners to, to go away with? What, what, what takeaway message do you want them to, uh, to leave and to understand? And you know, I, I want to uh, solicit them to help you uh, and, and to help this project. This has been a dream of my lifetime is to uh, you know, get mankind into space and particularly at the interstellar intergalactic level. So whatever I can do, you can count on me. But uh, you know, what, what can the listeners do and what message do you want to leave them with? The message is very simple. Through this new technology, we have put an end to wars because all the wars has been to have things and possess things. You can produce whatever you need. 
now has come to the time to serve humanity. In a very simple way, we, the machines and the systems which are produced like the one with CO2 and with other, like with Fukushima for nanomaterials, like using a Coca-Cola bottle, we have given you the freedom of knowledge of the universe. And the only thing we would like people to remember is no one needs to die. No child needs to sleep hungry. No man needs to suffer. And no man needs to commit crime to feed his child, to look, have a warm house, to be able to travel and have energy. It's not a free energy. At the end of the day, we have to pay it somehow to support the society we built up for the hospitals and roads and education. But let us work together to, through a new technology, deliver what has been the dream of the human race for thousands of years. To be able to have everything at a point of demand as much as we need and end of the greed. Because with this new technology, we have shown it and we show it more radically very soon. You can have whatever you like, as much water as you like, as much clean air as you like, as much gold as you like. Well, what, now, what is, let me ask you again, what is your scheduled rollout for these uh, these demonstrations, these feasibility? It's already been done. It's already been done. We've yeah. shown the Fukushima, the material is going to Japan. We, the CO2 conversion has already been done, but now we showed public how they can convert gases to solid and use these solids as fertilizers. It's been received from mm -hmm. universities. This is not a dream. This is what's happening. Now we are putting it in the hand of public, show them what to do with the patterns which we produced nearly eight years ago, nine years ago. We are showing what is written in patterns, and the patterns are donated to the world free. Our pattern has been opened and donated. It, it doesn't cost you anything to go in the kitchen, get a Coca-Cola bottle, and create your own water, clean water, and materials to have a... Uh, in any shape or form you like, the materials you like to produce. This in the video is on our website and it's been watched millions of times since it's been released. The governments have looked at it. Um, the space technology is in the hand of the Iranian governments. It's been tested. You lost the, uh, you lost the, uh, what do you call it, the biggest spy plane. Nobody knew how it was done. The American president asked, can we have our toy back? Yeah, um, I remember that very well. So <laughs> it's not a game because it's not a proof. Now we are putting it in the hand of the public. What we need the public to understand what is given and how it needs to be done and how we need to teach. It's not that the man on the street cannot do it. The old man in the street cannot make his generator. So we have to give it to the multinationals to do it for them. But now because everybody knows the abuse of pricing and exaggeration and control is out of the question. So we work as a humanity, doesn't matter you're in Africa. Well, Asia, let, America, let, me, Africa. let me ask another question. We, we look at humankind and we look at how irresponsible many of us have been as, uh, as human beings. And do you really want to give this technology? I mean, do you want to, it would be like giving a baby a chainsaw. Do you want this baby to, you know, a toddler to have a, uh, something, uh, a tool that is so powerful. How, how does this relate? Is that a good analogy or, or, or is it a bad analogy? It is a good analogy, but it's like the man who wins the lottery. At the beginning, it'll be mayhem because he doesn't know how to spend billions or millions he won in the lottery. And it gets to the point that he gets tired of spending and he starts living logically and becomes what he call it, uh, a philanthropist and gives some of the money away because he sees he had everything. At the beginning, it'll be a mayhem because the people would like to produce as much gold as they like because the gold has been dream of them all their life. But everybody can produce gold the same way. So the material world has lost its value, but it's serving humanity becomes the point. Uh, there will be a change of situation with the child for a while, but sooner or later, everybody has a change. So they all watch how not to hurt themselves and the others. Well, what, what you're alluding to here, if the material world loses its power over, over the human behavior, then we can evolve into being more spiritual and uh, higher evolved beings, if you will, and, and look at what is for the greater good. This is what I teach to my knowledge seekers. There's nothing they have to understand. This fact, once you understand the understanding of the new gravity, you transfer the knowledge into uh, how to make material, how to make food, how to look after your health, 
And all this cannot be done without understanding the position and work of the soul of the man. So you understand you have everything and the whole operation comes to the operation of the soul in being correct, in behavior, in thoughts. Now, we, when we want to do something, or let's say to rob, we put our hand in somebody's pocket or we go on the computer and pinch their accounts. In the new space technology, in the space, people can read your thoughts before you can do physical, physical movement to do such action. So they can't be stopped. So even the thinking has to become correct. And it takes time to get, to get rid of the habit. But human race has entered a new entry. You, you were, as I always say in my talks, people were praying for this technology. Now the technology is here. Do not make the same mistake we found the, the, the guy who said the earth is round and then find out a few hundred years later he was correct. Why did we hang him? Okay. Well, well, Kesh, I hear our background music coming up. We're, we're, we're out of time. I want to thank you very much for joining us. And I'd like Thanks. to invite you back uh, at any time you want to come on. Just get a hold of me. Let me know, and I'll make time for you, okay? Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, and have a, have a wonderful weekend, everybody. You all have a wonderful weekend out there, too. And uh, be good to each other. It's time to be kind to each other as, as, as a race. So that's it for the, uh, for the week. Everybody take care. I'll talk to you next Monday. Bye-bye.